and we are live welcome everybody for the demo day of the third hackathon of eat the blocks so eat the blocks hackathon a uh, hackathon that we do together where we build project based on the etb token and every time there is a theme and the theme for this hackathon was an nft collection and uh, we had a three submission and i'm super excited to show you this so we're going to see their uh, video demo and after we are going to vote for the winner the winner is going to win a 500 etb token and after that they're going to be a uh, five other etb token that will be shared across the all the the, the all the participants um so we have some people in the chat. We have Think Make Decision, Gustavo, Tieshex, Patrice, Michael, Yashvira. Hello, everybody. Um, so just before we start with the demo video, uh, the, the demo video uh, quick update for the, the ETB uh, uh, ecosystem. So first of all, we have some... Uh, okay, so here it's cut off on the chat, but... Um, the liquidity for the ETB token uh, has, uh, has never been so high. So, uh, so people keep being more and more involved in the pool. So that's good. The price is also going up. Um, and we are working on uh, two things. So one is a, uh, a Discord for the community. So this is going to be a, a token gated uh, Discord where you're going to need to have a certain number of token to enter in a Discord, and we're also going to uh, to publish a, a simple website for the project. So uh, we are going to the, the URL is going to be etbdao.com. Uh, I'm probably going to push this uh, this weekend. So it's going to be really nice to finally have a, a home for this community because so far it was just during this live stream, but that there were no no place really where we could talk to each other. So there is the Facebook group for for etb, but uh, it's it, so it's not specifically centered around the token and um, and also uh, Discord is it, just better if you want to form a community. So yeah, just some quick news uh, on the the ecosystem of ETB. Uh, then 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 uh, uh, what else? Uh, uh, so then we're gonna start with the. ETB uh, with a demonstration. Um, so first, the first participant um, is okay. So actually, we just okay. Uh, I'm still downloading one of the the video for the first project. So if you can just bear with me, we are at uh, ninety eight percent, almost there, almost there. This is a, a big video. Uh, well, actually, um, actually during the in the meantime, I can show you the the website already. Um, so here, or no, let's start, let's start with the repo. Okay. So the first project is crypto developers project one. And here, this is their repo with the front end and the smart contract, everything in the same repo. Uh, so we're going to check, check the contract. How does it work? Uh, contracts, crypto developers dot sol. Okay, so they use the latest version of Solidity. They use a, a open zip link for, uh, for, for the contract. Um, and, and here we have a couple of uh, uh, special addresses uh, uh, defined. Um, okay, so apparently uh, 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 my address and, and the addresses of the three developer are, are special. Um, so here we have the, the mint function um, to uh, to mint new new NFT. Um, okay, uh, so they're gonna be a period of uh, sale. So here sale is active, and after this period of sale, we cannot mint anymore. Uh, here after we have standard function uh, implemented for uh, yes seven uh, uh, twenty one like tokens of owner token URI. Uh, this is to serve the metadata. Uh, Redraw all. I think this is at the end of the cell um, and giveaway. Um, okay, so there is a reserve for developer that can give away some uh, some NFT. Okay, uh, cool. So overall, the contract is not too too complicated, um, and I cannot see 
any merge function but I think they have merged somewhere let me see do they have uh, okay so I'm, I'm not sure if they they have a, a merge feature um, anyway um, now we're gonna watch the video okay so finally I have finished to, to download the video so I'm going to add this uh, in my streaming software just bear with me one second um, Say again. Alright, let me select this. Uh, let me select this. Alright, this is loaded. And uh, okay, so now I'm going to play the video demo for the first project. Hello, guys, my uh, name is Gustavo Teixeira, and I'm going to present the Crypto Developers Project. So it's an NFT collection inspired by developers. And I'm gonna present the team first. So I'm Gustav Teixeira, software engineer. This is Renan Brits, also software engineer, more focused on the front end. And our artist, which made the NFTs, is Marcelo Cardozo, a pixel artist. So here's a brief description of the project uh, and, an, a, and an example of NFT. So it's a developer which has some uh, many traits, uh, the be a beverage, for example, uh, on the table, it, it can be coffee, uh, here's a bottle of uh, soda, I think, and uh, there can be coffee, tea, uh, a Red Bull, for example, and other traits. Uh, also has a painting, which represents a language, so this, for example, is Ruby, uh, it can have like Java, JavaScript, Solidity, and the others. Also the background, where the developer is, this for example is the dark room, but there can be some others. Uh, actually I'm going to show uh, other examples, so we also have a minting NFT page, which I can mint uh, NFTs of course. And here are, uh, here's a couple examples, I currently own 25. Uh, we have a many different uh, traits, uh, the hair accessory for example, face accessory too. Uh, here is an example of the coffee. I love coffee. Uh, a Red Bull right here. And so on. So this is the, the NFTs. Uh, okay, now I'm going to present a little bit of... Uh, I'm going to show a little bit of the code. So we have uh, three big parts, which is the contract, front-end, and the uh, images, which also contemplates the image generation because it's auto-generative art. Uh, not auto generated but combinatory, right? We make combinations with some assets. Uh, so I'm going to start with the contract. So crypto developers contract. And we are using, of course, Open Zeppelin uh, to facilitate our lives a little bit. And there's nothing much complicated here. So it's a basic constructor. Uh, we have a flip sale state to allow people to buy it or not. The sale have to be active in order to mint NFTs. Uh, also have our minting, NF uh, uh, minting function, which makes a couple of uh, pre-checks before uh, enabling it to be minted, like verifying if the sale is active, uh, the quantity of the total supply uh, haven't been reached, the maximum supply, and also the price the value that was sent if it is according to the price and then the a very small loop to to mint the nfts uh, also a function to set the base uri very simple another one to retrieve the token uri so for the token uri we are using a uh, vercel we deployed our app in vercel so i can go to uh, crypto developers.vercel.app slash api slash uh, one for example, it will will retrieve the metadata for the first NFT, which has a link to the uh, image that is on IPFS, and we are using it to we are uh, we are using Pinata to access it. So if I click, oh, it's very zoomed. So this is the the image, and a brief description that I haven't even completed yet, <laughs> uh, and the traits. Okay, so it also has a function to retrieve the tokens of the owner. So if I pass here an address, like my address, for example, that was on the meeting page, we, uh, it would be possible to see uh, the IDs of the tokens that I own. Okay, 
uh, also a function of withdraw to facilitate the the withdrawing of the value that is in the contract for all of the the owners like for example me Hena, Marcelo and the ETB project I suppose <laughs> Uh, also, it has a function to give away uh, for free a NFT. Of course, that have to pay the gas, but uh, we can like give away a couple NFTs to someone. It's... Okay, so that's it about the contract. Uh, I also wrote some tests for the contract. So for the deployment, if you, uh, it's a basic character, uh, basic uh, characteristics like the base URL name and symbol matches. Uh, some basic functionalities like, like flipping the self state uh, that should not be able to meet more than 25 developers, which we can change, of course, we can, we can modify it on the contract. Uh, also, for the minting part, I wrote many tests for the minting, uh, so here's just minting one developer and checking if the total supply has increased, uh, the balance of the minter, that the minter account should have one token with the first ID, and so on. And here for more than one min, uh, NFTs, so nine NFTs. Uh, also some other functionalities like the 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 function to give away. So I, I specified a look account here and I tested the giveaway function. Okay, so that's it about the tests. Uh, so I use Truffle, I already said that. All right, so for the front end part. Well, I'm not very good at front-end, so I asked my friend Hena to help me a little bit more about the styling and CSS, which I really don't like. I'm more of a back-end guy. Uh, but we... let me see. Oh, here, index. So it is the basic structure. Uh, we also w were, were going to put a roadmap, but we hadn't uh, enough time to, to make a roadmap. Um, but that's basically it. We have also a page to mint the NFTs. So this is a little bit big code, but we have many states here. So when the person uh, access the page, we try to sign it, it uh, sign in the person with the MetaMask. Uh, if uh, the person doesn't have, uh, it's gonna pop up a alert so that it has no Ethereum interface injected into the browser. But if it, if it has, then we are testing a couple of things, like the network. This, of course, when the contract will be deployed, uh, we, we will change it. So it's not going to be a hosting. Uh, it's going to be like mainnet, something like that. Um, and then after, uh, if the network is OK, we just load the blockchain data, which is basically going to set all of these states here. There is a couple of logs here to the bug, but I'll probably remove them. Uh, so I'm going to set the contract, the save status, uh, the total supply, uh, the wallet address, uh, the developer price. And here I'm checking if the person that uh, has just logged in has tokens. So if it has, then it's going to set the tokens in an array. That's later going to be used to show the uh, his tokens. And we have a variable to set sign in, like, like his... Uh, he signed it in, you know. Uh, here's the set tokens URLs function that's gonna uh, fetch the images. So we're gonna use the, the API for that. Here's the minting function. Uh, it's very, very simple too. Uh, we just calculate the price based on the quantity that he entered, that the person entered. Uh, then we, we just call the contract to mint, estimate the gas, and mint a quantity. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, here's just to estimate the gas with the gas amount, and then here we mint. We sent the price, the gas, and from the wallet that is signed in. And then on, on transaction hash, we just log. OK, I hope you are hearing me. I think my phone just turned off. Uh, and then we console log the transaction hash. Uh, later, we are going to change it. We are going to put some kind of a uh, loading thing in the in the center just to show that the, the transaction is being processed you know uh, also a function to sign out we just set the state to sign off sign uh, out uh, here's just basic uh, not very basic <laughs> the just the page I 
I don't think I need to explain much of it, but uh, here's the loop to show the NFTs. Uh, here's the button to meet the developers. Uh, that's that's basically it. Uh, and we use we used uh, Next.js to make the the front end with React, of course. Uh, that's it. Tailwind for the CSS to help us with the CSS. That's basically it. So now about the images. So we have uh, here the assets, the earring, for example, which is very high. Another ring for the female, the iPad, sunglasses, and so on for all the. Oh, here the developers. We have a alien, but it's very very hard. Hard. We have me myself, which I actually haven't put it yet on the on the contract. We have Jack, which is the standard one. We have Marcelo. We have Hena. Uh, these three here, Gustavo, Marcelo, and Hena. We haven't uh, generated them yet. I don't know if I will. Then we have a robot, which is also very hair. We have Rose also. And V, which also, this is kind of a special one, we haven't generated it yet too. Uh, let's just show, uh, so the, this is the beach, this is the company, uh, the dark room, dark background, the kitchen background, the office, and the tower. So here are, are all the assets, you can check it out later. Uh, and I'm just going to show how I generated the image. So I used Python to generate first the traits. So we have an array here with the backgrounds and then uh, we have the background weights. So the office, for example, has 35% probability of being generated and have the skin phototype, which I don't know if this is a very good name, but that's what well, first we will we were thinking just about changing the skin color, but then, uh, yeah, no, let, let's just do it different developers. And then we name it then like Jack, Rose, Alien and Robot. So Jack and Rose have equal probability and then have Alien, which is hair and Robot, which is even more hair. Um, then have face accessory, I have many here, including known, like just, just not any face accessory. And here are the probabilities. So the earring, for example, 0 0.5 is, I think, it's the most hairst thing uh, that we have, um, and so on. Then, of course, the sum here of the weights must equal 100, just to uh, just to you know, be correct. And then we create the combo of traits. So we use this library here, random to to make a choice for us based on the backgrounds and the background weights and then of course the traits generated and it's appended to a array traits and then of course here we check if it is already if it's like if it's not there yet because each of of an uh, nft has to be unique so it cannot have another one equal and then here you have another function just to make sure that all are unique uh, this is very complicated. I, I actually uh, took this from a Stack Overflow post. I don't know exactly how it works, but it works. <laughs> All right, uh, and here just a, a, a couple functions to print some statistics, statistics. So I can actually generate this very quickly just to show how it works. I'm just going to make a little bit less here to not take much time. So I'm going to Python. It's generate generate traits. So generated uh, 1,000 1,000 I think traits, and we have how many of each? Like the offices was 324, uh, Dr. Dre was nine, and the the paintings, uh, and so on. Uh, this is actually not correct. This should be hair too. <laughs> I'll probably change something around here. Just the name. Oh, here. Here, painting is haircuts, just should be painting. So painting, painting counts, all right. Uh, but you get it, so it's like just to show how many of each, you know. And then after we generate the traits, we can generate the images. So I actually commented it because it has two parts. I'm gonna explain this in a second. So for generate the images, actually let me put my phone to charge here. 
okay, the battery was was going to. Okay, so for generating the images, uh, we have uh, we first load the traits uh, JSON that that was generated in the previous script, and we then load the the assets that are in the images folder. We load them based on the traits array, and then we. Like we glue them together, we not glue. We, we I use this function here to like glue them together and make one image, and then I resize them because the original uh, size is 110 weight by 110 weight pixels. So you know, in order to make it a little bit bigger, uh, better to see, you know, we uh, I resize them to 512 by 512. And then I save them on the output folder. This folder, for example, has 200, just for example, just as examples of the generated images. Okay. Uh, and this last thing here that I commented is just to take the the hashes. So in order to generate the hashes, I use this inside the output folder. So IPFS adds dash recursive. Uh, I think it's recursive. I don't remember. Or folder action dot inside here to generate all the hashes and I output them into a text into a dot text file which is this so that comment is going to generate this this big uh, file and this one actually is the one that generated 10,000 uh, images in order to make this better like I used the uh, this thing here that I'm not going to do an hour, but it's just a regex that selects the first, um, selects all the the that output and then just transform it to a JSON array. So just to make it more readable, it's going to be something like this then, a JSON array with the number and the NFT, so 10,000 of it, and then. That's actually what I do here. I load the those hashes.json and I just uh, put them inside the the previous array that is traits.json to to point the the hash of it, which I don't know where it is right now, but it is somewhere. I don't know. Okay, so that's basically it about the. Actually, it should be this. Oh, I, I just regenerated it. So yes, but it's it was going to have another field here. I just uh, overwritten it. Actually, can get rid of that hard here. So it's gonna put this thing inside image IPFS with the IPFS. That is going to be used uh, with the API, which I actually didn't show. Right? I didn't show the page of the API. So. API here. So this is the API. It's very very simple. So we have that that same array traits.json which is here. And then we oops oops here. And then we make a function that receives the a request which has a query param which is the ID. And we just check the total supply which uh, with maximum is 10k so if one uh, if someone sends like 10k and one, it, it can't. Just it maximum is 10k. Then we generate the 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 metadata based on the OpenC I used. Okay, uh, and that's that's basically it. Here I concatenate the the Pinata cloud. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, actually. I couldn't make the the merge function. Okay, uh, I tried. Uh, me and my friends there we, we we actually thought about doing something with a serverless function. So I actually have a a diagram here. So we thought about having a serverless merging function which would receive two NFTs and then would generate another. But we we couldn't find a way to make it work. Like uh, the, like the NFTs were previously generated, right? So we couldn't generate more and put it into the contract. So we actually, I don't know, we couldn't find a way to do it. 
uh, again, our experience is not very, very big on the blockchain things. Uh, I actually just started uh, learning blockchain and NFTs like uh, one month ago or two months ago, I think, something like that. Uh, so we have a lot to learn yet. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, actually, let me check here. Yeah, so we just couldn't do this part here. Okay, so, well, that's basically it. So I just would like to thank uh, Julian for the opportunity in participating on, on in this uh, hackathon, or this project. It was very, very cool. And I hope I participate on the others too. Uh, that's right. So thank you very much for the opportunity. And that's it. Bye bye. Alright, okay, so that's the end of the video. So, wow, that's a really nice project. I really like the art. Uh, I mean, we can see that you guys were a team with a professional artist. Uh, I'm really amazed. That's super high quality. Uh, so, this is the deployment. Uh, you put this in the chat. Um, so we can uh, mint NFT already. Here you have the description uh, uh, of the team also. So yeah, congrats guys. Uh, you've done a really good job. Um, okay, so that was project one. Uh, after project two, so that's uh, the project of uh, Michael uh, Brewer. Uh, sorry, Michael, I probably do not pronounce you, your uh, last name correctly. Um, so the project of Michael, and uh, we are going to okay so first let's have a quick look uh, at the repo so here we also have front end and uh, smart contract in the uh, in same uh, same repo uh, startup hero creator okay so also use a uh, open zip link here so here we have the attribute of the the NFT stored as a struct uh, in the smart contract the meeting function burn out okay interesting so we can we can burn some NFT also. Um, okay. Um, and what else do we have in, in this repo? Um, so we have an NFT server. Okay. So I think this is the part that handles the the metadata. And the, uh, this is a, in Python. Okay. And we also have the front end here. So, uh, uh, all right. So there are three parts uh, in the application. Okay. So now we're going to play the project um so let me let me do this uh, all right greetings from the philippine islands my name is michael and this is my submission for project three of the etherblock project series this decentralized application is called startup hero creator it allows you to create images of software engineers for minting into nfts once they are NFTs, they can be merged or burned. Years and years ago, I had dreams of being a cartoonist, so I was able to quickly illustrate nine characters who represent the three key roles needed in a tech startup, an artist, hacker, and a hustler. I wanted to briefly go over the architecture of this project. It is comprised of three components, a React application for the front end uh, here, a smart contract, which is currently running locally on Ganache, and a Flask application for storing the NFT's metadata and image in PNG format. Essentially, it acts as a quick and dirty API service. It also gave me the opportunity to brush up on my Python. The workflow is as follows. Minting, merging, and burning are all initiated from the front end. The actions are handled by the smart contract, which if successful and gas fees allow, will mint the artwork and assign it a token ID. Merging is essentially the same as minting, but it creates a new NFT where its values are based on the NFT selected for merging. For burning, it will remove the NFT from the user's ownership in the smart contract, but will store its values to be used at the next minting. This will be explained further later. I could not find a way to mint and burn in the same operation, so this was the solution I came up with. Why not turn a bug into a feature? This is the main view of the application. 
on render it gives you bob ross to mint as an nft or invites you to play with the sliders to modify the characteristics and appearance of the startup hero there is a max value of 15 and this will determine if you can mint or not see if i go over 15 i can't mint anymore uh, there is a button that will randomize the design and characteristics, but it won't always stick to the rule of keeping its value under 15. So, like, if I click this, it could be 25. It's pretty high. The description also randomly gets created. To all, well, not really randomly created, but randomly sorted. Uh, it was more fun seeing uh, what kind of characters it would create than giving the random button of limitation. Uh, so here I'll do a quick demo of here. So I'll keep, this guy sounds cool. He is a total of 11. I'm going to name him uh, Swan. Um, looks good. Okay, and I'll mint this guy. Mint. Uh, this will open up MetaMask. It'll tell me the gas fees, etc. cetera. Uh, confirm. And it created it. NFT minted gives me the hash. I can view the JSON. Here is the JSON for it. This is stored in the Flask application. It has the attributes I selected, uh, the description, ID, and the uh, token ID. And if I want to see the image, it's right here. Boom. Uh, and that's pretty much it for creating a hero. Uh, so I'll create another one. Let's see. Sure, this guy looks all right. And I will name him Ajax. Mint him. Cool. Confirm. And now I get a confirmation that the transaction hash, and I can view the JSON. This is Ajax. And if I want to view his image, boom, there he is. And now, since I have an NFT, uh, you'll see the connected account here, and you'll see how many NFTs you have associated with your account here. Uh, and then you'll then, once you have more than zero, or as they have one, uh, you can view the collection, and then here you can see your collection of startup heroes. Merging combines two NFTs and creates a new one. It works out the average of their respective characteristics and gives them a boost in success. All startup heroes start with zero success and need to merge with others in order to gain any. For the success progress bar underneath each NFT, I set the success max to 10. Since I figured once you are higher than 10, you should already be considered a small company. Uh, as we can see in the metadata for Ajax here, he has a success of zero and his attributes one, seven, and four. So we are going to merge Swan and Ajax together. Boom. Merge characters. MetaMask will ask me to confirm. Confirm that. And then that will create Swan Ajax. It just combines the names and works out an average for their characteristics. So that's why he's a creative of four, uh, seven, three and a half, math rounds up to four boom and he has, has a little bit of success down here and that is essentially uh, merging heroes in startup hero creator burning an nft removes it from ownership but will store its characteristics in the smart contract to be added at the next time artwork is set to be minted it's not added in the smart contract but requested by the React application into a state called the burn bonus. So for this example, I will burn Swan Ajax. So Swan Ajax is here, 463. I'm gonna take note of that, 463. Burn him. Uh, MetaMask will ask me to confirm. Boom, confirm. And then he will be removed from here. Okay, so now I'm going to go and create uh, a brand new character. So he was four, six, and three. So I'm gonna make this one four, two, and five. And then I'm gonna name this one Rembrandt. And I will mint him. 
MetaMask will ask me to confirm. Okay, confirmed. I get the hash and the JSON object. And if I go to view the collection, I should have Rembrandt and he will be 888 because it added the characteristics of the uh, burnt NFT to the new NFT. Aside from spending so much time trying to figure out how to mint and burn in the same operation, the other major challenge was dealing with gas costs. For sending values to the smart contract, I had to try several options. Sending them as UNT8 uh, variables seemed to keep the cost down, and it worked with the data I was using. I would say what was really frustrating was how some methods would work without any issue in Remix, but would fail when attempted in Ganache. My choice for using Flash and SQLite to store the data was purely out of simplicity and ease of use. I probably wouldn't use them for production, but for building a demo, I thought they worked out perfectly. Uh, there's still a few bugs in this uh, that need to be worked out, but I think for something I built in 30 days, it turned out uh, pretty decent. At least I'm fairly happy with it. To end this demo, I would just like to thank Julian for setting this up. I probably wouldn't have attempted anything like this if not for the project series. I probably would still be living in tutorial hell. I also want to thank the ETB community. I'm not so active on the Discord servers, but always learn something uh, reading through the discussions, shares, and comments. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. All right okay guys so i think uh i think this the second video has finished um okay okay so next we are going to continue with project three um so 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 uh let's go let's see project three of uh are you guys still here in the chat? Or are you guys sleeping? <laughs> um, Alright, so... Next project from uh, Mike Sereco. Okay, so... Uh, Alright, so here we have the, the repo. Uh, SRC directory, where do we have the contract? uh software developers dot all right uh so here also like the uh the previous project so we have the the attribute defined in a spot contract uh mint software software developers a big uh, mint function here um okay then uh, a lot of function here buy token okay so here there is a, a built-in uh, selling function as well uh, change token price um, interesting so I, I believe this is for the sell mechanism this is probably to adjust the price of each um, NFT and here we can um, we can change the the sell the sell status um, okay so that's it for the code. So next we're gonna play the video. Um, uh, then, 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 let me turn this on, project three. All right. This is an ETB NFT developer project. Uh, this is our code set. Uh, let's, uh, Compile. Let's run our uh, tests.
uh, let's deploy Now it's time to run the DAP. This is a software developer's NFT marketplace where you uh, meet uh, developers uh, depending on their attributes and skill sets and also represent them in an image format. So let's connect to MetaMask. Home page loads your uh, wallet address as well as the balances uh, on the wallet address. Mint is where you meet the NFTs, the developers and their attributes and skill set. Marketplace is where you buy and sell uh, NFTs. Uh, My tokens is where you view your NFTs that have been deployed. Our queries and merge, this is where you get details about the NFTs and also merge them. So um, let's, uh, right now the marketplace is empty. Let's mint one. Let's mint Julian. Julian is a full stack developer. We select the color. Since he's a full stack, we are not going to select any of the other uh, skill sets. So Julian, Julian is very expensive. Let's mint. Now, after meeting Julian, we can go to the marketplace and see that Julian is present. And we can change the price. When you go to my tokens right now you can see Julian is present and it's token ID one price 10 ether and minted by you we can also uh, put in a, a an ID and get Julian's metadata we can also get to find out the address that owns this now after meeting Julian let's meet one more Good at truffle, rust, solidity, and um, let's say TypeScript. You can see how the colors keep changing and um, this dev called Mike is also experienced. Mm. Let's uh, make it light. Background um, shows that uh, the dev is experienced. Let's name him Mike. Mike is slightly cheaper. Um, five ETH. And uh, we can only meet again after five minutes. So we have to wait for five minutes to elapse, then we can meet another. Let us switch accounts. Let's connect to a buyer who wants to buy uh, Julian. So we go to uh, the marketplace. First of all, when we go to home, the address has changed. When we go to my tokens, 
the buyer does not have any. So we go to the marketplace. Now we can see Julia. So let's buy Julia. Let's confirm. Right now, when we go to um, my tokens, Julian appears in the buyer's uh, uh, wallet. So if we switch wallets and go back to um, to Julian, to uh, the, the minter that minted Julian, and uh, we are connected. If we go to the marketplace, we can see Julian can now also buy back. And we can see that um, in the Minter's wallet, we can see that this uh, NFT was bought. Okay guys, so this is the end of the third video for project three. So congrats to the three participants. Uh, so just a quick recap to know who is who. So project one was uh, crypto, the crypto developers team. There were three people and, uh, and they have a, a deployment already. Uh, then project two, uh, startup hero of um, of Michael Brewer um, and then project three so uh, from uh, from Mike Serico so now it's time to vote so you vote for the best project so you, you can go to uh, voting.edoblocks.com let me put uh, the link uh, in the description um, and so here you can vote project 1, project 2, project 3 and in order to vote you need to have some ETB token because your vote is proportional to the number of ETB token that you have um, and so a lot of you already have ETB because it was airdrop but for the other one you can get some uh, on the, the pancake swap pool here um, so it, this the, the voting app is still a little bit in beta so if you see any bug, uh, let me know. Once you cast your vote, you should see some uh, graph here with the the result for the different vote. And we have one week to vote uh, until next Friday. And after we're going to determine the winner, so the winner is going to receive 500 ETB token. And, um, and the other people are going to share another pool of a 500 ETB token as well. Um, and yeah, and, uh, and so I'm, I'm super, I'm really, really surprised that we had uh, all, all this, this good project. I mean, to be completely transparent, I was worried that we wouldn't get any submission at all because an NFT collection is not easy to do. There is all the, the, the visual part, but you know, like participants were really creative, were able to figure it out. Um, so congratulations to everybody. And, uh, and I really hope that you learn a lot to participate uh, in this hackathon. All right, guys, so this is the end. Um, oh, yeah, and as a reminder for those who arrived a bit late in the stream, so there are going to be some update for the ETB token very soon. We're going to have a, a, a private Discord. Uh, we're also going to have a, a website. So, yeah, expect expect new things to happen. Um, and, and um, yeah, I want the, to see this community to have a... I want a place so that we can we can communicate more easily. All right. Thank you, everybody, and have a great weekend. Bye.